What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Plugin Tut, your home for handcraft WordPress plugin tutorials tutorial. And it's been a long time since I've done one, so let's just dive right into it. I found this new theme. It's called Chaplin. It's put out by, I'll call him my good friend, Anders Norin. I hope I'm saying that correctly. You can get it for free, wordpress.org slash themes slash chaplain. And you can go to his website to see the demo of this beautiful new theme that uses Gutenberg. Now, real quick side note, I've already done a couple videos uh, on this. And uh, I didn't like them. They went too long because I started rambling on about Gutenberg, which I might be doing right now. Gutenberg has always been pretty difficult for me to get used to using. There's still some usability issues, and I really haven't found a theme that does anything better than when I normally build a site, like like using Beaver Builder with Beaver Themer and the default theme, that kind of thing, or even the Astra theme. Chaplin, on the other hand, has made me actually really enjoy using Gutenberg for the first time ever. <laughs> uh, there's still some stumbling points, but hopefully we can get through those. Let's dive right into building this type of homepage in Chaplin. So first thing I'm going to do is going to go ahead and add a new page. I'll call this my new homepage. I'm going to publish that. The theme is already installed. You simply search for Chaplin, hit install, and then activate. And actually, I guess I should review one item here. So the theme also uses this free plugin called CoBlocks. And... Uh, essentially to build out these feature sections where you see those circular icons and then uh, this sort of hero area. Uh, CoBlox is owned by GoDaddy. Now, it used to be a, a self-owned uh, entity uh, along with its theme company. GoDaddy now owns them. Take that for what you will. I'm never really a huge fan on huge commercially owned uh, plug-in properties only because I know that eventually there'll be some big upsell model. But right now, Coblox is, is pretty nice. It's pretty elegant and really makes uh, this theme worthwhile. Okay, so I've got the new homepage. What does it look like? Let's take a look at it real quick. Uh, this is what it looks like. Absolutely blank with the page title here. And we want to make it look like this page here. So first thing we're going to do is add a featured image. So I'm going to set a featured image. I'm going to go with this guy on the scooter or girl. I can't really tell who or what it is. Uh, and I'm going to write an excerpt. This is a great theme. And it's fun! Exclamation point. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit update. And we'll view that page. Now that I've added a featured image, you can see it just drops it right into the content, um, you know, just like any other page or post. And this is how you would use featured images. You can see new home page, and this is a great theme. It's fun right above. I'm going to edit this page again. And one very important thing you have to do in order to make it look like the demo is to switch it from default template to cover template. And then when we select cover template, and review the page. Now you can see this nice, beautiful image is now set in the background. Uh, your page title acts as like this master call to action. And then that excerpt acts as sort of the subheader, the subtext below that. Um, really cool, really fun. Side note, I'm not going to go through all the options of this theme. But if you go to customize and use the customizer, you can do some fun things with the cover template. Uh, and this cover template, as they refer to it as, can be used on any page or post throughout your entire site. So you can do many of these types of covers across you know, unique content throughout your site. And you can come in here and kind of give the cover template um, a slight design aesthetic. So I can do something like uh, that blue color is selected. I give it a little blue 30% uh, opacity, and you can see it changes the color there. I can remove the fade to text on scroll. Um, and I can uncheck the fixed background uh, so that now when I scroll, uh, the, the text doesn't uh, fade away and the image doesn't have that parallax effect, right? So some fun options that you can really play with uh, to make cover images a little bit more unique. Now, let's move on to the next section of the demo, and it's these six featured boxes, blocks, whatever you want to call them. You can do one of two things. If you're not using uh, the CoBlocks, plugin, you can do columns, and you can come in here and you can add uh, three columns to this block. If I can just snag the control unit, I can do three columns, I can do feature, 
if I can spell feature one, uh, I will make this a little bit bigger. That's probably too big, but uh, we'll, we'll roll with that. I'm going to copy this and um, I'm going to make this full width or wide width. I'm going to paste in, oh, I guess it doesn't take the formatting, so I'll just go a little bit bigger. And then same thing on this block. Uh, I don't know what size I set, 59. Not that we have to be exact. This is just for demo purposes. Update. And view the page. Now, this is the default Gutenberg columns block, so we're getting a little bit closer to this style. Uh, but you can see that's going to take you some time. You have to adjust the text, and you'll have to upload an icon, an image, or whatever you want to put in these blocks. Uh, but if we go back to edit this page and go with the CoBlox Features block, let's get rid of this. Still some quirks with Gutenberg. I'm still not fully adapted to using it, especially when you're trying to get in between blocks and, and capture the parent control unit. I don't even know what you call it. Uh, the parent you know, outline of the block, it gets a little bit difficult. But with code blocks activated, we click on code blocks, we click on features, and boom, this, the, the, the formatting is already done. There's some icons in there. I'm going to drag it to three columns just like it shows in the demo. I will set this to wide width because that's what it does on uh, the demo of Chaplin. And I'm going to duplicate this block. So we have our two rows. I hit update. I'll view the page. Scroll down a little bit. And there you go. We've got the six featured blocks, the two rows, and it's very close to what um, Anders has designed here. You know, you just modify the, the images if you want. Uh, one real cool thing, edit the page, about the co-blocks features block is you can play with these different icons located here on the right-hand side, and it comes with a set. One thing that threw me off, <laughs> just as an, as an aside, is you can actually scroll through these icons, which I didn't really pick up on in the beginning. I just saw the search, and I was doing things like home and house and person, and I was just trying to find like icons that identified uh, with a feature that I was typing in. But you can scroll down this list here uh, to find new ones. And they get some pretty nice touches, like you can do this, uh, well, this icon doesn't really lend well to that, but you can do outlined or filled and change um, sort of the weight of that, and you can drag and drop and make these things a little bit bigger, uh, or resize, I should say. So pretty fun stuff. Again, that's part of the CoBlox uh, plugin. These two featured images here, are not featured images, but these cover art images, whatever they you might want to refer to them as. Um, the best block I found to replicate this is the gallery plugin, or excuse me, the gallery block. So if I go to the media gallery, I will grab this one and this one, create new gallery, insert the gallery, and then I will make it full width. So it takes the span of the content area. I'll hit update, view page. When I scroll down, now I have these two nice full-width images, which I assume are, are these images are just slightly modified. There's a little bit of padding there. Either way, I think you can kind of play with the galleries block to really, um, you know, fill out however you want to see fit. And the galleries block is good because if you added another image, in fact, I've never tested that. Let's do that live. Why not? Why not? Right? Let's just do it live. So if I go to gallery, add to gallery this image, add to gallery, update, uh, automatically switches it to three columns. I'll hit update and view the page again. Boom. That's pretty cool. Uh, so the gallery block works like a charm there, I, I'd say. Okay. So that gallery block is default to, to Gutenberg. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. Um, this is one I really couldn't really couldn't pin down. I, I think he's either using the hero block here or he's just adding some uh, CSS to a regular header. But let's just play with the hero block for a second. Again, this is the hero block from Coblox, and I'm going to remove... Uh, can I remove is the question. I can't. So we're going to get rid of this block entirely. And we're going to do the heading block, and I'll say this is the middle call to action. And I'll hit update. 
I'll view the page. And now you're going to see how the content is sort of just left justified. Um, that's because that's the way this, uh, the, the core the core content area is justified, right? So right now, if I was writing a blog post, everything would be sort of left justified. Now, one fix for this, I believe, in the more recent version of this theme is you can switch it to a full width cover template. Now, when I do that, I might have to center this, align it, I should say, text alignment, center, update, view the page and there you go it's in the center before um actually when i was making this video a couple days ago that up that template wasn't available i was still on the older version and i had to add some css to that so um switching the template to full width the cover template will give us that flexibility you know in the center and you can make a nice little call to action right in the center here let's move along we're going to add a block down here to get to that next section. And we're going to use the media and text block. And you can see right here that Chaplin has this uh, text on the left, media on the right. By default, it's media on the left, text on the right. We're just going to flip it. Uh, we're going to flip it with this little trigger right here, this little button. And we will also make it full width. So we'll say here's some content on the left, period. Media library, I'll add this image again. We'll hit update. And I'll show that in a minute. So now we just quickly add that block in and boom, here's some content on the left. Here's our nice full width image on the right or full span of that uh, height. Looks great. You can do some other things. And this is just one thing that wasn't working for me the other day. I don't know if I have a conflicting plugin, but you can see here the the background is black uh, or like a slate gray, I guess. And, and then the text is white. So if I came over to this section here and I click into it on the right hand side, I can do background color settings. Well, first, let me click into this text. So let me make this text white. Uh, text color white click back into this setting and go background color black hit update this wasn't fully working for me the other day well, let's just scroll right down yeah the text still isn't picking up on it so I think it might be getting uh, overwritten by something uh, else here so let's just go ahead and is it because of this can I hit two at the same time No, it's always picking that same color um, not quite sure what's really happening without diving into uh, the CSS and just looking at what's going on there. So I'll just re replace it with that. And again, to format the, the demo, we're just going to replicate this. So we're going to edit the page or duplicate it, I should say. Click on the block, duplicate the block. Now you see we have two. We're going to switch this one to the right. And boom. We now have... We'll probably just change the image. And we now have our text on the left, image on the right, image on the left, text on the right. right? Just like the demo. Cool. We're going to edit the page one more time, add in some of the last elements here. So this is the hero block from CoBlox. We're going to go scroll down to the bottom. Last block that we're going to add here, the hero. And we are also going to lay out in the center. And I'm not going to adjust the text. So you can just leave it as is. Uh, I don't know. So he has a white background there. So maybe just the color settings, the background to white. Hit update. View the page. And there's the hero block, just like in the demo. You can go in and modify uh, that button to match it up if you want. Go back to edit this page. Secondary. Um, 
You can do different styles with the buttons, which look pretty cool. You can do that per button. That's pretty fun. Uh, probably get confusing eventually. And background color, you can fill that in just like his demo. Uh, again, the Koblox blocks are very nice and easy to use. I never thought I'd be using a GoDaddy plugin, <laughs> uh, but here I am. Uh, so that's it. That's really how it goes. Let's go right back to the top of the page, and we'll just go through the different um, settings. That way you can see it. And here's just a quick overview of the blocks that I'm using on this page. So the blocks are two features blocks by Koblox. So that's these two blocks right here in uh, the center. The default gallery block which is built into Gutenberg. That's what's going to show these two images or three images, whatever you put in. Uh, this middle call to action is the built-in heading block. So that's right here. This is a middle call to action. These two images with the text uh, uh, opposed on either side is the media and text block, again, built into Gutenberg. And then the code blocks hero block uh, allows us to put in these nice, quick, and clean, and elegant hero call to action areas. The biggest thing to remember in order to get the image uh, like this in the background with uh, you know the, the page title down below with the scroll down uh, icon with an arrow is to set the featured image, throw in an excerpt, and then change the full width cover template or change the default template to the full width cover template if you want that full widthness. Uh, on a home page and just the default cover template if you're using this on like a blog post and you still want the content justified to the left uh, and not full width so pretty easy it's a pretty slick and clean theme Anders does a great job with all of his themes go ahead and thank him or donate to him on his website it's only got six five-star reviews right now I do expect this to to get pretty high because this is a great starter theme for a lot of types of themes so I don't know I mean service agencies like in this like in the uh, the demo thumbnail uh, software companies service companies straight up blog if you want to just use it as a blog you can set the home page to a, uh, just a blog post and modify what those uh, what the metadata looks like it's a great theme maybe I'll do future videos on it if you want um, but this theme most importantly really got me into using Gutenberg, which I said at the top of the video, and I think that's huge. Um, I think it's huge for a lot of things and really just identifies a problem where Gutenberg's adoption, and I think people are getting much more uh, acclimated to it lately, really depends on you know what the front end looks like. So if you're not happy with what you're making with Gutenberg, you're just not going to use it. Just like with page builders. Like if you're not happy with starting from scratch and trying to design your own website, you just get frustrated. You're not happy with the tool, with the product. Chaplin theme allowed me to really want to use Gutenberg. And I think that's saying something. Hell, it even made me install a GoDaddy plugin. No offense to the original team behind Koblox. Um, I just know that, you know, in the future when big brands own software, there's always something that happens that just leaves a, a bad taste in your mouth. But anyway, I hope you really enjoy this video. Uh, you know, I always say I want to get back into making tutorials. It's just, it's really hot in my attic. Like, it's really hot. I have a big light shining on me. Uh, there's an AC in the background. It's 100 degrees outside. So creating these things takes a little bit of an effort these days in the summertime. But hopefully I can upload another video soon. If you enjoy it, thumbs up. If you want more, subscribe to the channel. Leave me a comment below what videos you want me to make next. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. It's Plug and Tut. Don't forget to subscribe. See you.